Welcome to this tutorial. So here we're given that the cylinders A and B are mathematically similar. The height of cylinder A is 5 meters, the height of cylinder B is 10 meters, the total surface area of cylinder A is 180 meters squared. Calculate the total surface area of cylinder B. Since we've been told that both shapes are mathematically similar, and we've been given the total surface area of cylinder A, it means that if we know the scale factor of surface area, we can calculate the total surface area of cylinder B. Now we can calculate the scale factor of surface area by noticing that we've been given the height of each shape, which means that we can calculate the scale factor of length. So the scale factor of length is equal to 10 divided by five, which is equal to two. And from the relationship we learned in the previous tutorial, this means that the scale factor of surface area is equal to two squared, which is equal to four. And since the height of B is greater than the height of A, it's correct to assume that the surface area of B is greater than the surface area of A. And this is because both shapes are mathematically similar. So all other dimensions of cylinder B, such as the surface area and the volume, would be greater than cylinder A. And so that means that in order to find the total surface area of the cylinder B, we need to multiply the surface area of A, which is 180 meters squared, by the scale factor of surface area, which is four. So we get that the surface area of B is equal to 720 meters squared. So having an idea of which shape is larger than the other shape, is useful in choosing whether to multiply or divide by the scale factor. Let's have a look at the next example. Two buckets, A and B, are mathematically similar. The height of bucket A is five times the height of bucket B. The volume of bucket A is 3,000 centimeters cubed. Calculate the volume of bucket B. Okay, so we've been given the volume of bucket A and since buckets A and B are mathematically similar, it means that there is a scale factor of volume that we can use to calculate the volume of bucket B from bucket A. Now, as we're told that the height of bucket A is five times the height of bucket B, well, it means that the scale factor of length is equal to five. And from the relationship that we've just learned, if the scale factor of length is equal to five, then the scale factor of volume is equal to five cubed, which is equal to 125. Now, because we're told that the height of bucket A is five times the height of bucket B. Well, it means that bucket A is larger than bucket B because both shapes are mathematically similar. And so this means that the volume of bucket A is larger than the volume of bucket B. So to find the volume of bucket B, this time we need to divide 3000, the volume of bucket A, by the scale factor of volume to get that the volume of B is equal to 24 centimeters cubed. Okay, so let's have a look at the next example. A and B are two geometrically similar solid shapes. The total surface area of shape A is 360 centimeters squared, and the total surface area of shape B is 810 centimeters squared. The volume of shape A is 2000 centimeters cubed. Calculate the volume of shape B. So we're told that shapes A and B are geometrically similar, which is another term that means mathematically similar. And the term solid is generally used when we are dealing with three dimensional shapes. Now, because the shapes are similar, it means that we can find a scale factor of volume, which will allow us to calculate the volume of shape B since we were given the volume of shape A. However, unlike previous questions where we were given information about the height of all of the shapes, we've been given the total surface areas of shape A and B. Now from the last example, we know that we can get the scale factor of volume if we know the scale factor of length by cubing the scale factor of length. So we need a way of finding the scale factor of length from the information that we've been given. Now, as we've been given the total surface area for each shape, we can find the scale factor of surface area by dividing 810 by 360 to give us 2.25. And since the scale factor of surface area is equal to the scale factor of length squared, we can find the scale factor of length by taking the square root of the scale factor of surface area. So the square root of 2.25 is equal to 1.5. And so we can now find the scale factor of volume by taking the cube of 
this value to get that the scale factor of volume is equal to 3.375. Now, since the total surface area of B is greater than the total surface area of A, it means that the volume of B is greater than the volume of A because they're geometrically similar. So in order to find the volume of B, we need to multiply 2000, which is the volume of A, by the scale factor of volume, which is 3.375, to get that the volume of B is equal to 6,750 centimeters cubed. Let's have a look at the last example. The volumes of two geometrically similar solids, A and B, are in the ratio 8 to 343, respectively. The surface area of the smaller solid is 24 centimeters squared. Work out the surface area of the larger solid. Now this time, the volume of each respective shape has been expressed as a ratio. Now in a previous tutorial, we've seen that the scale factor is generally expressed as a multiplier, but can also be expressed as a ratio. And so we can express the scale factor of volume as the given ratio, which is eight to 343. And so we can work with this ratio as we have in previous questions to find the scale factor of the other dimensions, such as length and surface area. Now, given that the shapes are geometrically similar, we need to find the scale factor of surface area in order to find the surface area of the larger solid, given that we know the surface area of the smaller solid. But in order to find the scale factor of surface area, we need to first of all find the scale factor of length by taking the cube root of the ratio this time, okay? The cube root of eight is two and the cube root of 343 is seven. So the scale factor of length is equal to two to seven. Now to get the scale factor of surface area of A to B, we have to square the ratio, which gives us four to 49. Now, since we were told that the surface area of the smaller solid is 24 centimeters squared, well, that means that the smaller part of the ratio, four parts is equivalent to 24 centimeters squared. And therefore the surface area of B is equal to 24 divided by four, which is the value of one part multiplied by 49. Since 49 parts represents the surface area of B. Okay, so calculating this, we get that the surface area of B is equal to 294 centimeters squared. Okay, so it's interesting to see the relationship between the scale factors of length, area, and volume in these examples. And in all of these examples, we saw that we needed the scale factor of length to get the scale factor of the other dimensions, which means it's important to be able to calculate it in order to navigate between the different scale factors. Okay. So I hope that was useful for you. Keep up the good work and I will see you soon. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, leave your comments down below and subscribe to this channel so you'll be the first to know when we release our next videos.